Hey everyone, it's Jenna Melanson from Canadian Beats Media. Today I'm joined by Adrian of Ancient Teeth for our latest segment of Zoomies. Welcome, Adrian. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So first off, care to introduce Ancient Teeth to our listeners? Oh, um, and I guess Ancient Teeth is a heavy melodic rock band. Um, you know, and it, it's sort of I the I don't know how to place the genre, just heavy melodic rock music, and it, I have sort of been working away at wanting to make it sound like specific records that I really loved when I was growing up, and the real emphasis is is about the project or the band is on the um, the recording quality and just having really big sonic sounding records mm -hmm. and using old analog consoles and tape machines and big studios with uh, a really nice room. There's uh, so having that, like that is sort of the aesthetic and then, you know, drawing on my entire life of musical uh, experiences, whether it's heavy punk or metal or like a lot of classical music. I was raised uh, in a classical music family and both my parents are classical music performers and they continue to still play in orchestras. So I was able to incorporate them into this second record. So the, the it's sort of, it's a, yeah, it's an expansive, heavy melodic rock band, I guess. And there's some songs that are more aggressive to certain listeners. And there's going to be some songs that are very light and atmospheric. And most of it is all sort of, uh, so this is the second record and all of the records are sort of each unique stories in themselves that have been about my life. And okay. so, yeah. And, and I, one thing that just came to mind was that there was, there was some records like the Weezer Pinkerton record was a reference for the first album that Ancient Teeth made when, and the only reason I say that is that if you put on headphones, you can actually hear the room in the, all the recordings, you can hear the room mics. And I wanted to be able to find a studio that would able be able to give that characteristic. So all of the ancient teeth records have been recorded at the same studio with the same engineer and um, just using different production styles so that I can maintain a high quality of audio fidelity. Um, yeah, that's a pretty end result. Okay. I don't know if that's that answers your question. <laughs> So you're about to unveil Humanizer. That's right. Um, care to tell us a bit more about the writing process behind the release? The album uh, immediately, the, the songs were written immediately out of finishing the first record. And mm -hmm. as the first record was being sort of being mixed, uh, the pandemic happened and we weren't really sure what was happening. We were living in Vancouver at the time. And so the, the story kind of starts with leaving, leaving there and leaving with a, a bit of uh, tenseness. And so the album starts very aggressive and it ends very light. And, you know, we were packing up our entire life into, um, into a little Volkswagen and I was driving all the stuff to a storage unit. And every time I'd go and throw the stuff in the storage unit, the, person at the uh, reception kept telling me like, you know, we might have to close because the pan this pandemic. And I'm like, please don't close. I have to move out of this apartment. And so we ended up living in uh, my parents' basement in Alberta for three months. And as we were living in the basement, they had a little piano and I had a guitar and a bass and uh, my microphone. And I just kept writing and Chris was sending me music that he was working on. And, and uh, it, it, it was really kind of written as these little personal stories uh, about the pandemic, I guess, mm -hmm. and, and feeling, whether you're feeling isolated or fearful or confused, challenged. Uh, I, uh, we, and then we ended up moving to Montreal halfway through the, in the first summer of the pandemic. And that's when I started to see a lot more life but it was isolated life people were very apprehensive of being close and so i started to write uh, songs about 
these people that I was seeing. And there's um, like the next single that's coming out. It's called Down a Hole. It's about a guy who, who lives behind my house and he goes to the park across the street and he sits there and plays shuffleboard. And it's just kind of a story watching him sort of live this little life. He's in his 70s. And uh, yeah, this, it's, it's just like a sort of an observational take on writing a record but it's also written in first person so uh it has a you know it has a very personal approach to it and i i was hoping that you know from what i saw and what i experienced that it would it was sort of like a unification of humanity like we were all sort of stopped and we all had a chance to, to sort of begin again mm -hmm. and i was hoping that the world would blossom into a very beautiful place after that and I think we've maybe seen a lot of opportunity for change but we've also seen a lot of very difficult global hardships and which you know leaves us a feeling of um, concern for me but I also think that the point of this album was to really to really showcase that we're all very similar and we can all get along, we can all find our way and to, mm -hmm. to bring, bring, bring people together. And um, so that the, the writing process was, was, it just, that's the way it kind of came out. And uh, over the course of the last few years, I've been not, not trying to make something that isn't happening, just let things kind of flow. If the songs go this way, they go this way, if they're, super sparse like and a single vocal that's just the way it's going to come out and to allow for the music to to take its own shape mm -hmm. and yeah sorry there you go <laughs> <laughs> um are there any particular tracks on the album that you're especially excited for listeners to hear well yeah i there's a one track it's called vanishing light and I started noodling on, you know, on acoustic guitar, and I was picturing it to turn it to be like a Sufjan Stevens kind of thing, and um, it transformed. And then my parents came to visit, and I got them to play their instruments, trumpet and oboe, and and then I added a piano to it, and it just bloomed into this big. I don't know, it's a big, beautiful, emotional, uh, you know, moment. And I'm, I really love it. And I ended up having a friend of mine, Trish Robb, sing on it. And I thought that it, it was able to help push the narrative and the story even further with having another voice and another, another perspective. And she, mm -hmm. she delivered an absolutely astonishing vocal to it. And I'm re really proud of the the ability to be able to collaborate with other artists and musicians and, and make, make music, you know, because that's a huge part is being able to share it with other creators. Uh, and Ryan Dahl added a, a Mellotron and he, he's someone that I've always looked up to and always um, had master the record. So he's another sort of reoccurring person uh, with the band as well. Um, so he added a spooky little Mellotron. <laughs> so I'm really excited about that one. I, I love the audio like quality of it. It's it sounds phenomenal, and I'm really proud of the way that it turned out. And so I I think that that song in particular, if you're wanting me to say one, that would be one that I'm really proud of. Okay. You previously released the single Sacrifice. Yeah. along with a music video, which used AI technology. Um, That's right. Could you tell us more about how you incorporated the technology into the process and what inspired you to experiment with it? Um, what inspired me was, well, when you have no money to promote a record, no label really to get behind it and do videos and radio and all that kind of stuff. You're, you have very limited resources. And I've been loving the ability to create a lot of visual art that I've wanted to see in my head using some of these tools. And I, <clears throat> about a year ago, 
the, I, I was working in film and there was this huge strike that happened and it was because of predominantly because of AI. And so I just dove into it because I didn't want to be afraid of it. it all the headlines were to be fearful. And I thought, well, I know I can use this as a tool. I know that it, I think that video cost me a hundred dollars in tokens or credits to, to sort of experiment. And, you know, coming from a film background, I was, I knew how to use the cameras and the lighting equipment in my basement that wasn't getting used on a film set. And I just, uh, you know, just, I did it. it was like a trial and error it was uh it was very exciting very fun and then i just kind of dove into it and you know took a lot of the lyrics and created images through the lyrics and then uh generated motion with those images and then incorporate film filmed my own motion with video blended it together and and experimented so it's like a it's a, an experimental piece and i'm glad that it turned out the way that it did because it it grabs your attention the way a music video should. Definitely. So, yeah. Does that answer your question? I forgot you, yeah. you asked me three points. <laughs> yeah, it did. Um, so with the release, do you have any plans of any upcoming shows? Well, we have a show in Montreal April 6th that hasn't been announced yet. So I'm just announcing it uh, without permission. That's fine. Um, we're going to do <laughs> some a radio thing at uh concordia sometime in april as well there is an opportunity to potentially play a festival in may that we're really excited about and i was speaking with someone in new brunswick about booking a show there it's you know it's it's a band it's or it's, it's a project it's a band it's a bunch of musicians there's like local musicians here in montreal that i've known for 20 years that are learning the material right now okay. so we can play some local shows and uh you know I, it's it's funny because the the my history of being in the touring rock band has always been like you get together you're all living in the same city you're jamming four or five days a week and and coming up with the material and you just get in a van and go and now it's more focused on the writing and the recording aspect mm -hmm. but the desire and the drive to tour and play shows is like it never left my body so right. i'm I, but i haven't really figured out like how I'm gonna make it happen, but I have uh, you know so many friends that you know want to play, and I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to being able to play these songs live. Okay, awesome. So the next five questions are just for fun. If you could magically learn to play any instrument overnight, which would you choose? I don't know, sitar. Okay. If you were to create. If you were to create a signature cocktail named after ancient teeth, what ingredients would it have in it? Oh, man. Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, mango, pineapple, pear. It would have soda water and uh, lime. And it would be probably a really fun straw, like one of those ones with a swirl. <laughs> um uh, definitely an umbrella. Ice cubes, lots of ice. It would be, it would be like a sparkling... Uh, like the ultimate sparkling water. Okay. <laughs> if you were stranded on a desert island and could only listen to three albums for the rest oh of your life, God. what would they be? Wow. Okay. Here we go. So that is a really tough question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Off the top of my head, there's a, a producer in Toronto. His name's Ian Blurton, and he put out a record called Second Skin. And I would say that that record is absolutely incredible. And all of the performing on it is mind blowing. The audio quality, again, it was done at the uh, Calgary uh, Music uh, Institute, sorry, the Calgary Music Center, and it just sounds phenomenal. That's one record. Um, oh boy, this is so difficult. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. This is so challenging. Ah. <laughs> I, listen, I listen to so much music. Um, I have no idea. Madonna Immaculate Collection would be something that I would take to the grave. I would want that record with me. I would. That's the one that was all the singles remixed. It's, okay. it's got a blue cover. It's incredible. Uh, so a third record. I need mm -hmm. a third record. Can it be like 
uh, does it have to be an album or can it be like my Black Sabbath uh, mixtape that I got when I was in grade six that has like sure. all the Black Sabbath album, the best of? Kind we of. can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that cassette, I think. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite warm drink on a cold day? Favorite warm drink on a cold? Uh, throat coat tea. Throat coat tea. Okay. Yeah. And if you could work with any fellow Canadian band or artist who you haven't already, who would you choose? Wow, that is such a great question. And thank you for asking that. Um, <laughs> wow, eh? Uh, well, <laughs> you know, Neil Young, mm -hmm. does that count? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know? It all counts. <laughs> For sure. So that's it for Zoomies. Thanks for joining me and congratulations on the new album. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for allowing me to be here.